Aloha everyone, I'm Chris and welcome to Chris Creates. So this last week I was able to shoot a couple of restaurants. Uh, they needed some food photography for their um, delivery systems. And I just kind of wanted to recap how they went and uh, kind of walk you through uh, my what I did, why I did it and, and create something hopefully to help you I don't know, feel more confident when you are on shoots. Uh, so first things first is, uh, you know, I always try to contact the, the restaurant and the manager first to make sure uh, they know what's going on. A lot of times in, in real estate and in, in restaurant or, or working with small businesses, the person that hires you might not be the person on site or maybe they're gonna be late or they're not gonna show up till the end. Um, so it's always good to communicate early, try to get the person's name and info, uh, who's gonna be your on-site contact, and then contact them and let them, let them know what you're gonna need from them so that when you get there, there's really no surprises. Like I, I called the, the general manager and he put me in contact with the kitchen manager and the front end manager of these restaurants and I was able to let them know, hey, I'm gonna show up at this time, I'll give you guys about a half hour head start to cook the food. Um, I'm gonna need them in a specific order because at the end we're gonna shoot like one group photo of, of three or more shot or three or more of the dishes so that we can kind of make a cool um, overview image for your uh, your platforms and um, so that means you know I want these in this order um, you should pick the top 10 dishes blah, blah 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 so there's a lot of things that you can kind of communicate to that person early that when you get on site you will probably still need to communicate but at least they had a heads up and they kind of knew what was going on yo what up we're here in San Clemente we're uh, shooting some food photos today pretty excited uh, we're doing for DoorDash, we're shooting 10 photos and a hero shot. Should be pretty fun. I always try to communicate with the staff when I arrive on site. Uh, I'm the kind of person that wants to just give my give a, give a greeting to everyone there. So when I get there, I generally, uh, hello, my name is Chris, I'm the photographer today. Hello, my name is Chris. And I introduce myself to the busters and to the servers and to the, the bar staff and to the management staff. Anyone that I see working there, I make sure to introduce myself. It's Tomas back there saying what up? <laughs> make a little YouTube video. So when I'm walking around doing something and maybe they haven't, they don't know who I am, it gets weird. But if I've introduced myself, they know, oh, that's the photographer, it, it just kind of like falls out of mind. And then if I need something, it's really easy to go, hey, can, excuse me, can you get me this? And they've already met me. It's not like, well, who are you, right? You just you just want to be friendly. I think that's a good life lesson. Like always be friendly, be that person that walks into the room and, and greets everybody and has a smile and make people feel good about you being there and then good about themselves by just being a really nice human. It's really simple to do. And I feel like it always helps me when I need something on site or I gotta spend a little more time or I finish up early. It's really easy to communicate with everyone if you've kind of walked in and, and, and set that bar for communication right away. Once I've uh, communicated all of that uh, with the staff, what I needed, uh, really my mind is kind of make a plan of attack try to figure out exactly how I'm gonna do it. I usually do the same thing very routinely, uh, so I kind of already had it set, but I walk myself through my notes really quick. I always carry a little notepad and walk myself through the notes of what I'm gonna do. Um, I generally don't look up the food because I don't know what their, um, their best food is gonna be. I don't know what their choices are gonna be. They're gonna pick their top items and I don't know that. Um, but with Mexican food, I kind of already know what I'm gonna get. You know, maybe I took a look at the website, mostly just to look at what the interior might look like, just to get a feel for the lighting. To me, the lighting is way harder than actually shooting the food. Um, but make my plan of attack, uh, it's generally the same. So once I make those notes, I just kind of go over them in my head and just um, maybe shoot some test shots, just kind of get prepared. I try not to get too lost. I don't try not to hop on my phone. I try not to get too in the weeds with other stuff to keep my mind really concentrated on what I'm about to do. Um, so that when it, the food does start coming out, I can just kind of like, I immediately walked in, I noticed it was really dark inside and that the windows weren't getting any natural lighting. You're actually hitting them, it was kind of casting around it because it was overcast. They have outdoor tents set up, um, the indoor, outdoor, indoor, outdoor weirdness we have going on in California. So they had that set up and I knew that, okay, well, if you have the overcast, it's already a softbox, but then with the tent and it's white, we're gonna get a very even amount of lighting. So then I just took a couple test shots with the plate to kind of see if there was enough lighting without having to pop a flash um, that was just gonna cast in there to keep everything even, no harsh shadows, nothing crazy. And it turns out there wasn't. Uh, it was overcast and it was shooting through another tent or it was the light was coming through a tent, so it was actually quite dark. And I didn't want to open up the ISO and I wanted to shoot at a certain shutter speed. And I definitely didn't want to go below five, six or above eight. Uh, that's kind of that really, that point in the lens where it gets really sharp. And I always want these images to look as tack sharp as, um, tack sharp as possible. And I don't want there to be a lot of, um, out of focus. I generally want everything to be kind of all in focus, especially if you're shooting top down, you want to see the whole dish. I don't want the tip of the avocado to be in focus and then the rice and beans is out of focus. Like we're not getting super artsy here. I just want it all to stay in focus. Um, so when I kind of had the camera set up and taken some test shots, it was really too dark. So I immediately looked and had an initial table set up and I popped the flash up, started to mess with lighting and realized immediately, okay, the flash will work. 
I was able to use the tent as kind of a bounce reflector and shoot into it and reflect back down, really evening out the lighting, which looked great. But now we came into the next problem was that all the tables, while they had like a wood veneer, they were like a gloss. So the reflected light, even though it was being bounced and wasn't direct, it was still giving a nice little, little of light coming off of it, which you don't want in your photos. If you're gonna get it on a plate, it's okay a little bit, but you really don't want it on the table. The table needs to look pretty even. Um, it just, it takes away from the photo. You always want the brightest part of your photo to be the part that you want them to look at, right? Cause that gives your eye, takes your eye naturally to that spot. So you want the food to showcase and everything else to kind of be just there, right? So I initially thought I could move tables. So I tried a couple different tables, didn't really work out. None of the tables, uh, they were all like a gloss veneered top table. Um, but anyway, so I found a table in the back. Um, I was able to get the kitchen manager or, or the, actually it was the, uh, the, the, the front end manager to go ahead and get me a black tablecloth. First he bought a white tablecloth, but for me it's a no-no on white and it's a no-no on glass or reflective surfaces. Uh, both of those just don't make any sense. Um, so we put the black down, it was neutral, it was easy to get it so it didn't have any spots on it because um, it was kind of eating the light and not reflecting it and the food popped off of it. So we went with that. It wasn't my favorite choice, uh, but given the circumstances, it was pretty much the perfect choice at that moment to get moving forward. One of my plans was to shoot with a light and a softbox, bouncing the light in, in this tent. Now, the, outer the exterior sun was moving with the morning, but there was cloud. So it wasn't shifting too much. It was just kind of slowly getting darker. And at one point the sun did poke out and kind of create a much brighter setting, which I had to adjust my camera because it was brighter. So I just had to really pay attention to that was gonna change and use my eyes naturally to see like, oh, it looks a little darker in here. Let's check my camera to see if anything's changed. Even if you have a flash popped up, which I did, and I'll show you some video to show you where I had it and why I had it. But even if you had the flash popped up, if the, light, the sun pops out, then all of a sudden your flash is too bright. And if the sun disappears, maybe now your flash isn't enough. So that does help having the extra exterior lighting, the, the off camera strobe, but you do need to pay attention to what it's doing because natural lighting comes into play and definitely changes everything about the photo. Um, that was a big one at this shoot at uh, La Siesta. It was a lot harder to just stay even with every photo because the light was kind of shifting the whole shoot. Um, even though it was around 11.30 to about one that I shot, it still moved a lot in that time and created, um, not a problem, but created more of a, uh, a, a point for me to make, uh, a pay attention to the details. It was definitely something that I needed to pay attention to a lot more um, versus the first day or uh, the first one that week, which was uh, the Asada Cantina. And that one was interior. The sun moved a little bit. I had a little bit of difficulty. I had to move some tables back because the sun was harsh, but because I was bouncing and it was mostly interior, it didn't affect the photo as much um, at the end of the shoot versus the first first part of the shoot, they looked very similar, not too many camera adjustments. I wanted 10 dishes um, from the bring out in a specific order. I wanted the first seven to be whatever order they wanted. It didn't really matter, uh, but anything that was like a dessert base or that could break down quicker, I wanted that first, and then we could work our way through the rest. And then the last three, um, I told them I wanted to create a shot that was a kind of a grouping of three plates with the kind of the accoutrements, the chips and salsa in the plate, and kind of make it look like a nice big tabled shot uh, for them to use. So there was just a little bit of indifference from the first seven. And of course I would do those three dishes at the end individual. So there was 10 individual shots and then that one big shot with the three dishes. So uh, once I explained that to them, they totally understood. And then it was just about the flow of getting it all out. I always asked to give me about five minutes in between dishes. I noticed that 10 minutes is almost too much time. Um, I'm only taking two or three different versions of the photo before I move on to the next dish, but I don't want the food to sit. And I can always go back and shoot it again if something changes or if I miss something. So as long as I get them in intervals, the food won't get too old too quickly. And the goal is to get one hour with all the food there and only have it sit on the tables uh, for so long. Before the food started to come out and I was kind of still doing my plan of attack, I definitely um, wanted to get anything accoutrements or anything on the table that they normally bring their, to bring their guests. So chips and salsa at a Mexican restaurant is pretty normal, guacamole, um, any types of, of salsas or pico that they have, um, maybe two things of chips so you have two to choose from. Um, in case one falls, breaks down, I knock a chip over one day so I had to get another one. Like Little things like that tend to be, tend to be a big deal. Once we started shooting, um, the interior of the tent that I was shooting in was definitely the perfect softbox, but the light itself was moving, the sun was moving, and it was kind of creating a moment where one photo was a little brighter than the next. All the food seemed to be very evenly when it came out. There wasn't like dark plates versus light plates and all these things. It was really even, but it was just that sun moving inside outside tent that made it kind of difficult. I left the flash in the same place the whole time. 
because um, there was a tent that was like this. So my goal was to stand the flash up and bounce it into the tent and then back down. And then the wall here was white. And I'll show you in the video that, you know, they wanted to bounce it kind of like this onto the table so that you kind of got an even cast down on the, on, the, on the food. And then the plate itself didn't really have any shadow shadowing off the food of the plate itself onto the table it was mostly even a little shadow was okay um, if you have to work with it but for the most part if you can eliminate shadows it will look cleaner and be better for editing uh, once i started it kind of just you know to me i waited a lot because the food was coming out kind of slow they were serving guests we got started a little bit late so you know i learned my lesson is maybe get in there an hour earlier than opening and try to get the chef to start pumping the food out about a half an hour before opening those are things you learn, you know, I'll, I'll make notes or I did make notes and I'll apply that to my next shoot and hopefully have a better flow and a better process. Um, the more you can control your process, that's the better the outcome. It's just like having a routine. It's easier to get from one to 10 if you know how to count one through 10, as opposed to forgetting that there's four, six and seven. It just, it makes everything so much easier. So I'm always trying to hone in on my process and make that overall better so that I can get in and get out and produce the best image and um, hopefully be called back to work some more, you know. At the end of the day, you, if you produce a really great image or you produce a great video or you produce a perfect service or a great product, like that is gonna shine, right? But the person that produces it is generally the person that gets the next job, not always what you produce. So having both a great personality and a great product or a great service together can really, the results are endless. And I live by that and I'm just trying to implement that more and more and get better at it so that I can constantly be picking up more work. and hopefully get to the point when maybe I have to turn down work because I have so much of it that I need to kind of pick out the ones that really are for me and that I want to do instead of now I tend to take on all work because I love shooting and um, I can always use more. Um, but eventually I'd like to get to that point when maybe I can get so much work that I can turn down work and in turn maybe group a team of other photographers or content creators around me that I can pass on work to and help generally grow that community of, of, of creators around me and. and show other people what you can do if you just put the mental fortitude and time into growing this business and you just stay humble stay awesome and stay working you know it's, it's a big deal anyways guys this has been great um always 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 you know make sure you listen to the client make sure you listen to whoever you're working with communicate everything that you need from them it's so big it will help you on the end uh keep your routine you know make sure you pay attention to what you're doing and how you're doing it and always check your camera right check out your lighting check yourself in the mirror for shit in your teeth Nah, just kidding. But have a good one. This has been great. Appreciate you guys. And we'll see you on the next one. And check out this video. Check out this video. All right, guys? Check it out. Peace.